Hi, this is Tim Distasio, and this is combustion analysis for HVAC technicians. This is a multi-part course that will teach combustion analysis, combustion safety, and other things that surround that on a level that HVAC technicians will be able to understand, to be able to consume and use in the field. The training goals of this course will be to understand the basic theory of combustion at a technician level. So we're not gonna be teaching the chemistry of combustion any more than what we need to, to understand what combustion is and how to properly diagnose it. We'll talk about carbon monoxide and how to use safety practices to not only keep the technician safe, but also our customers. We'll talk about draft pressure and what draft pressure has to do with proper venting of a fuel burning appliance. We'll cover combustion analyzers, how to use them, and how to interpret their readings and make adjustments based on those readings. We'll also cover diagnosis using combustion analysis and draft testing. And finally, we'll also touch on combustion safety best practices, things we can do as HVAC technicians, as well as salespeople to help our customers appreciate the combustion safety and appreciate the recommendations that we'll be giving them. Let's get right into the theory of combustion. Three components are needed for combustion. Obviously, you need a fuel, something like natural gas, propane, or fuel oil to burn. It's very important to have enough oxygen because that's part of the chemical reaction that we need oxygen to feed that flame. We call that combustion air. We also need an ignition source, something like a pilot flame, a hot surface igniter, or a spark igniter. You're already familiar with these things as an HVAC technician. We should also understand that, so, that combustion is a self-sustaining chemical reaction. As long as we have fuel and we have oxygen, once we ignite that fuel, it will continue to burn as long as there's fuel and oxygen. In order to stop that burn in our industry, we stop the flow of fuel. It's a lot easier to stop the flow of fuel than it is to stop the flow of oxygen. So we stop the flow of fuel via a gas valve or some other kind of control. That's how we stop the combustion process. But our main goal in, in the combustion process to, is to convert that fuel into heat. And that heat is what we do to heat our homes, heat the air, heat the water, whatever the process is. Heat is our desired result. But heat isn't the only thing that happens in the combustion process. We also create water vapor. That's part of the chemical reaction that we just accept. We just need to manage it. We need to vent it out or drain it out. We also create carbon dioxide. Now don't get carbon dioxide mixed up with carbon monoxide. Carbon dioxide is naturally found in our environment. You and I breathe this whenever we exhale. The thing is we just don't want a lot of carbon dioxide in our home. So that's another reason why we wanna vent out uh, after the combustion process because car too much carbon dioxide is a bad thing. Now, in addition to those byproducts that we accept or even the ones that we want like heat, or water vapor, carbon dioxide, we also get unwanted byproducts. Some of them we can't do a lot about, but if we have too much of them, that's indicative of incomplete combustion. It's a safety hazard. It can shorten the life of the appliance. So we want to try to control these to keep these as small as possible. And the big one is carbon monoxide. That is a poisonous gas that we'll learn in our next lesson uh, that can kill us and it can also harm other living things. So we wanna get our combustion process to a point where we're not creating a lot of carbon monoxide. Other things happen in the combustion process that we don't really want either. Things are created like sulfur, acids, other harmful gases. These are harmful to our health. They're irritants to our eyes and nose. These things we want to get rid of and not have as much of. So it's important for us to understand how we minimize these unwanted byproducts. And finally, another unwanted byproduct is soot, another particulate matter. Again, these are harmful to our health. The irritants, they cause breathing problems. So all of these can be controlled with understanding how to properly combust or light a fuel on fire and burn it cleanly. So again, our goal is to convert fuel into heat, but in addition to that, we're also converting it into carbon dioxide and water vapor. But for this slide, let's just talk about converting fuel into heat. Natural gas is one of the fuels that's burned. In this example, uh, we're burning natural gas in this Bryant furnace. Now natural gas is measured in cubic feet per hour. To put that in context, about one cubic feet per hour of natural gas equals about 1,000 BTUs 
per hour of heat. So this Bryant furnace, let's say it's a 60,000 BTU input. How much gas is it consuming in an hour runtime? Around 60 cubic feet of gas. How much heat do we get out of it? Well, because it's 96% efficient, we get 57,600 BTUs of heat. But what if instead of natural gas, we were delivering propane to this furnace? Well, propane gives us a lot more heat per cubic foot of hour of volume. So a one cubic foot per hour of propane gives us about 2,500 BTUs per hour of heat. Let's next talk about converting fuel into carbon dioxide and water. Of course, we know that we're trying to convert fuel into heat, but we also understand that carbon dioxide and water are part of the chemical process. They're along for the ride. They also serve a purpose in letting us know that we have complete and efficient combustion when they're at the levels that we expect them to be. So this is the only chemistry that we're gonna talk about in this entire course, and that's this slide right here. When we're taking natural gas or propane, and we're burning it, we're taking the methane, we're combining it with oxygen, and we're creating heat as well as carbon dioxide and water. Now, carbon dioxide is not poisonous to humans. It's not carbon monoxide. It is a natural uh, part of our environment. In fact, we breathe it, but it should be vented out because high levels of carbon dioxide are not healthy for humans. So that's why we vent it out regardless. The water vapor when we're talking about a non-condensing appliance, so something like an 80% furnace or boiler, that water vapor is going to stay in vapor form as it's vented out. So it's mixing with the flue gases and we just vent it on out. But with a condensing appliance, like a 90% or higher furnace or boiler, we're taking that water vapor, we're extracting so much heat out of it that we're condensing it back into a liquid. And now we can't vent it out, we have to drain it out appropriately. So to put it in context, how much water vapor we get out of the combustion process, again, we take our 60,000 BTU condensing furnace, the combustion process, when we light 60,000 BTUs worth of natural gas, we're going to produce about three quarters of a gallon or six pounds of water per hour of runtime of that furnace. So it's a tremendous amount of water vapor that we're producing when we burn fuel. And that's why we have to drain it out. Let's next talk about unwanted byproducts of combustion. Along with heat, CO2, and water vapor, there are other unwanted byproducts of combustion that are harmful to our health, and carbon monoxide is the big one. We're going to see low levels of carbon monoxide usually in the flue gases, but when we start seeing high concentrations of carbon monoxide, it's indicative that our appliance is not burning cleanly. We also can possibly start reintroducing those high levels of carbon monoxide back inside when they collect outdoors. So we don't want to see a lot of carbon monoxide. Sulfur dioxide and nitrogen dioxide are also unwanted byproducts. They're irritants to our nose and eyes. They have acid to them. That acid gets in the water vapor. That water vapor can condense and start corroding metal surfaces like vent pipes and our heat exchangers. So we don't want these things in the process. Uh, these need to be vented outside, well away from the building to prevent them from collecting in high concentrations and being reintroduced into the building and causing not only health problems, but damage to the building and our fuel burning appliance. Well, this concludes this lesson in combustion. It just took us a few minutes, but we went over the theory of combustion. Next time, we'll talk about carbon monoxide safety, which is very important. Thanks for watching. Leave your comments down below and stay safe.